Hello, how is everyone doing? It is your fallen angel, and today we will be covering the occult power in the brain, specifically the pineal gland. The pineal gland is the part of the brain that empowers what is known as the sixth sense and other paranormal abilities. It is also the center of bliss sensations. The pineal gland is defunct in the average person. A defunct pineal gland is analogous to severed spinal cord where the brain cannot send messages to move the body parts beneath the area that has been severed. The only difference is that it affects the soul. So a philosopher known as Rene Descartes considers the pineal gland to be the the soul of the body. It is considered the seat, the soul of the, the, the brain. Now there's a reason for this, right? Because the pineal gland has a lot of key factors that make it so important. A lot of key factors that make it third eye-like. And we'll get into the meaning of it. But here we have a little imagery of all the parts of the brain. As well as, we need to understand that the human brain, if we split it down to, we cut it in half right down the seam, it will operate in duality. It will have dual parts. The pineal gland is like a small almond shape hidden behind the thalamus, a small little almond, and it is a singularity. It is probably the only singularity we have in the human body because it's that it's potent in the soul casting for the human body. It is the only singularity. Think about everything else operating in duality. Two eyes, two legs, two arms, two hands, two ears. Everything operates in duality. Duality is everything in the cosmos, life and death, morning and night, man, woman, masculine, feminine. Everything is duality, except this one thing, the pineal gland. Through centuries, because of Christianity and its related programs, humanity has devolved and degenerated spiritually. This is why the human race as a whole is psych psychically powerless. The goal of the Christian church always has been to keep humanity without knowledge and without power. Any time the Christian church took control of an area, the ancient spiritual texts were removed and or destroyed. The church then replaced the knowledge and it removed with lies and fictitious history. This is why the human race is where it is today, spiritually. Depression, illness, misery, helplessness and ignorance are the results of loss of this spiritual knowledge. <laughs> This analogous to a limb that has been immobilized is in a cast and is in stiff and withered. But it is only worse. Humanity has been denied access to psychic powers through dead generations and the lack of use and has all but lost. In order to activate the pineal gland, power meditations must be done regularly. It takes time to empower this gland and to activate and use it. Now, this is not a direct attack or a... Um, or a... way of to disregard the church because... Spirituality is, is congruent, it is good, it is good to keep your ethics aligned, but we must recognize this, you must see both sides of the coin. While spirituality in the church is great, they are also removing your ability to have your psychic abilities, your abilities to realize that you yourself are godlike. Now you yourself as a human can be godlike, not saying that you are the singularity of the macrocosm like God. God is the macrocosm. Whoever the, the God may be that you believe in, that is the macrocosm. What we must understand is, as a microcosm, you have power beyond belief, psychic ability beyond belief. Everything you see around you is a spiritual warfare to uh, remove this ability from you, whether it be the mainstream media, whether this be the hypersexual market, Whatever it may be, it is to remove you from you activating your pineal gland to its maximum potential. The pineal gland works in conjunction with the pituitary gland. Both of these glands are stimulated through the opening of the crown meditation. The pituitary gland is responsible for releasing a variety of neurohormones related to fear, love, and stress, while the pineal gland is important for melatonin production and circadian cycle regulation. Huh. Now everyone's going to think, how does this little almond shaped thing, almost in the behind the brain, almost behind the frontal lobe and all behind all these other parts of the brain, how is this 
the gland that is responsible for melatonin production, knowing when you sleep and understanding light receptors. Because this little pineal gland has light receptors itself. Well, how is that possible if our eyes are the things that have light receptors and this is how we visualize things? How is this hidden object, this hidden gland having light receptors? That is because this is the third eye. This is responsible for a lot of things in your life. Now, the pineal gland is also responsible for how you wake up. Now, think of people that never had an alarm. They naturally wake up at a certain time. They naturally do things at a certain time. Their testosterone regulates itself or estrogen regulates itself at a certain time. This is all done through this gland because of its light receptors. It has light receptors. <laughs> So it understands how to regulate the human body, right? It is much more than just psychic powers. It has intrinsic powers within the physical realm as well. So we must understand how these two glands are incorporated because the pituitary is also what you know, tells your body to up upregulate testosterone or, or downregulate it. So men, when you are under a semen retention journey or you're practicing brahmacharya, you must recognize that the semen will climb up the spine and re reach the pineal gland. And when this happens, this is how you activate your third eye. Your third eye. The pineal and pituitary adapt and lower the frequency of bioelectrical currents. They are psychic energy transformers. Psychic energy enters through the higher chakras and descends down through the chak crown chakra where it enters the pineal gland in the brain. As it enters the brain, the rate of vibration is slowed down. An active pineal gland acts as a transformer that further slows down the energy to a lower frequency. The energy then enters and moves from the hypothalamus region of the brain into the pituitary gland. The pituitary further transforms into energy to an even lower frequency, so then it can be assimilated and read by the brain. Okay? So that's just a quick understanding of how the pituitary and pineal adapt to the bioelectrical currents. We as human beings are energy. We are electricity. We're, everything that's happening around us is, is electricity. Our thought patterns are all through electrical currents. It is not just blood flowing through our body. This is currents, okay? We are waves of, of energy. The corpus callosum works to exchange information between both hemispheres of the brain. Most hem humans do not use the right side of the brain as we live in a left brain world. Void meditation silences the left side of thinking and logic and opens the right side, which is the intuitive psychic side. So guys, there are two hemispheres of the brain. Like we explained, this explains handedness. As you can tell, majority of the world is right hand dominant. This is because this is the logical side of the brain. This is not to say that the other side of the, the brain is not logical. It is actually extremely logical and creative and, and immersive. Left handedness correlates with the right hemisphere of the brain, the artistic side, the right side. This side of the brain correlates with the intuitive psychic end. Now, with void meditation, this is how you turn off the logical side and open up your psychic realm. And this is how you create and envision and manifest things, is by using this side of the brain. There's a reason why they create, the system is in place to make sure people are right-handed, okay? We will dive into that topic further within this slideshow. Light is essential to the soul. So much negativity has been associated with light because of the abuse of Christian programs in the New Age movement. Light is connected with lightning, which is the symbol in creation in, and is in New Age symbol of Satan, the lightning bolt. We can travel on light and use light for our own purposes. Guys, we have videos on astral projection. This is how we use our light receptors, the pineal gland to astral project, okay? This is how it has negative connotations because they don't want you understanding how powerful you are being human is powerful it is a powerful thing there's so many people that disregard how powerful they are because of the state of mind they're in okay they're letting their thoughts consume them instead of using it to their advantage the human brain your thoughts and emotions will follow and make patterns and manifest your reality therefore it is essential that you're speaking positively you're thinking positively and you remain in an enlightened state of mind okay 
So, now back to what we were saying. If we go to any institution, schools, colleges, whatever it may be, we always see that desks are right-handed. There will be very, very small, and you're like, well, mm, I guess maybe that's just how desks are made. No, this operates off handedness. They want to make sure people are using the left hemisphere, which operates with the right handedness. Okay, this sounds like it is opposite, which it is. The left hemisphere, also known as the logical side, think of the L's correlating with the right and the R's correlating with the left hand. Artistic and, and the right hemisphere correlates with left handedness. So we need to understand that this operates in duality, okay? You can use both hemispheres of the brain to your advantage. But society in general wants to force you to be right-handed, okay? But we must understand that this, everything can operate in duality, okay? We will also get into a few other outliers, great outliers that you can see and understand how you could use it in your cosmos, in your mini universe. So, also, institutions are here to create workers, not enlightened thinkers. We must keep that in mind when we are understanding how the world around us works. They're not here to create thinkers or psychic abilities or to make you understand how spiritually you are connected within this cosmos. They are here to make sure you are working, you are a slave, and you are a slave to material objects. When you can understand that you yourself can ascend to a godlike state. I'm not saying you will become God itself, but you can ascend to a godlike state. So, Leonardo da Vinci, a man that could do both. He was writing with his right hand, writing logistics, you know, and he was drawing with his left hand. Now, we understand that many artists, many tattoo artists are left-handed. Now, this is exactly why, because this is the creative part of the brain in full display. Now, Leonardo da Vinci was ambidextrous. He was showing us that he could do both. His intelligence was so extreme, his pineal was connected obviously we know leonardo da vinci had his third eye open because his 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 corpus callosum this lining between both hemispheres were in cohesion these were in cohesion together right so when we think of leonardo da vinci we have to understand when he was enabled for him to write, draw, and paint with both his right and left hands, this theory was understood by da Vinci. He understood that you can use both hemispheres of the brain. We must understand as a, as a whole, the nation is not using both hemispheres of the brain. They're only using the left hemisphere that's operating with the right-handedness. When you can invoke both hemispheres, you will understand so much more about intuition, so much more about what's going on around you, so much more about how everything is intertwined and how everything is operating in a duality. So in this picture here, we also see how Leonardo da Vinci is drawing the virtue in man. We will also get into what this means. The virtue... Virtuvian man is da Vinci's study of the human form, which is meant to be perfectly proportionate through the application of geometry and mathematics. It's only meaning to demonstrate the perfect ratios and perfect proportions found in human anatomy. Remember guys, perfect ratios. We, when we think of perfect ratios, we think of golden ratios. We think of phi. We think of Fibonacci. The Virtuvian man, on the other hand, represents the idea that the human body itself embodies a harmonious proportional design that reflects the order found in nature. It is a visual representation of the concept as above, so below, suggesting that the same mathematical geom geometric principles that govern the universe also apply to human form, guys. We have been talking about as above, so below in many previous videos, guys, so check those out. We understand, even Da Vinci understood, that things are operating in unison, okay? Things in the cosmos are acting in unison, as above, so below, in so many different aspects. Whether this be in nature, humanity, co in cosmology, these are all intertwined. Even in astrology. The flower of life. The flower of life is often seen as a symbol of creation and the interconnectedness of all life. It is believed to contain the blueprint for creation of the universe with 
each circle representing a stage in the process of creation. The center circle in the flower of life is said to symbolize the origin of source of all existence. In summary, both the flower of life and Vertruvian man are symbols of that reflect humanity's fascination with the understanding, the relationship between the human experience, the natural world, and the underlying geometric principles that connect them. They represent a quest for harmony, proportion, and a deeper understanding of our place in this cosmos. So guys, when we look at this circular figure that was drawn, right? This also embodies the flower of life. The flower of life is like the dodecahedron in every aspect of life. It is the egg of life, the flower of life in every aspect of life. We see this in deciduous trees. We see this in how flowers bloom. We see this in how the embryo cycles happen. We see this in the number nine, it's just a loop. It is completion, right? We have other videos and other topics on that as well. So you could check out. So, finally, this is the Fibonacci loop. Now, here's a little side tip for you guys. When we think of the Fibonacci loop, we see a loop, but we also see the boxes as well. I want you to see these boxes as the logical side and the loop as the creative side. Now, when I'm saying this is to say that there's no right or wrong here. They all end up in the same place. The boxes are guiding they're guiding the waypoint and the loop ends up coming. This is how the flower of life is depicted. This is how humans are born. And this is the nine in completion. This is the loop that is embedded in so much. It's embedded in all of nature and embedded in all of us. Look at your thumb, for instance, right? This marking you see, this is a Fibonacci loop that you see. Now, another point. When I explain duality and handedness, we also must understand that a lot of women are naturally left-handed because of this hemisphere, this hemisphere understanding. So when we think of Fibonacci, I want you to think of women as the loop and men as the blocking around it. We see that men are the structure that are brick by brick, order in order, and women are the loop, okay? They're the loop. This is not to say that the loop is strange this is to say that the loop is following the structure and it both ends up in the same place creating this harmony and unison man and woman coming together in harmony harmony and unison this is also known as the star of david as above so below right the masculine fire intertwining with the feminine water these things is how things are creation this is the creation of life this is how the cosmos and mankind are intertwined powerfully and this guys is the occult power of the brain if you have any questions feel free to leave them in the comments i'd love to see them and thank you for watching